Hello guys. I bought too many books again. So, so I'm going to show them to you because that's what we do now. Hold on while I get them. I'm not joking. I have too many books. I don't even know where I'm going to put all these while we're going. Um, but anyway, we'll start out the thing that's on the top, which is Seeing Ghosts. It's a memoir that was sent to me by Grand Central and it's by Kat Cho. And it is, is a book about this girl who's basically she fears death and then her mother gets sick and is dying and she's working through those emotions it sounded really poignant and moving and like something I would probably like and I would cry which is usually a good sign that I will like the book Ooh, if it'll make me cry I got this beautiful copy of Tenant of Wildfield Hall by Anne Bronte, which I'm supposed to be budding reading with uh, my fellow co-host of TBR Lowdown, uh, the Diverse Reads book club that I run with a couple friends. Um, you can follow us down below on Instagram if you want to join us as we read different books every month, and we may or may not be coming out with a podcast soon. So anyway, this is a classic that we've heard really good things about, and it's the only Bronte I've never read, so I'm really excited to read this, and this is gorgeous. It's got like timelines of the family. It's got neon yellow um, edges. Sorry, my brain stopped. It's got some illustrations. It's really gorgeous, hard copy, never been touched, loved it. Wasn't very expensive. I think it was like 10 bucks. Totally, totally loved it. I was debating about getting either that or like a beat up old copy. And I was like, mm, it's too good. I got to get this book. Also, um, I'll just take a second right here to say, if you are watching this and you enjoy book hauls and crazy people and uh, weird reading vlogs and the occasional book tag um subscribe subscribe to my channel uh, and hit that like button all right thank you and thank you to all the new people who have subscribed i i appreciate you being here i hope you enjoy uh if you have video ideas suggestions just random book stuff you want to tell me put it in the comments and i will hop on and we can have a chat because i love going on there and chatting with you guys i'm a little bit hit or miss sometimes but i do get on there event eventually um it all depends on my work schedule and what's happening but I do get there. I get there and I say hello. Anyway, back hey, to the it's editing Alyssa with green hair um, from the future. I, I just realized that apparently in this home in particular, I really don't summarize any of these books for you, especially anything that's on the more popular side. So I'm sorry. I don't really do a great job of summarizing books anyway, and I'm really bad at reading the synopses. So sorry. I got several books from my friend Stephanie. Um, I will link her Instagram down below, but she was getting rid of some books and she showed us all the books, my, my bunch of me, my bunch of other friends that we're all in a chat with. And so I claimed a few of them and she kindly sent them to me. And I got a copy of Truly Devious, which I'm really excited to read. We Are Okay, which I've always wanted to read. Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe because uh, I keep seeing this everywhere. It, look at all the words it's won. I just need to read it. I am going to finally try The Cruel Prince at some point. I wasn't going to buy this series, but if I, if I like this first one, I will continue on. I just have a feeling I won't like the series. I don't know why. I just feel like it won't be dark enough for me. But if you'd like to watch a reading vlog of me trying The Cruel Prince and see my thoughts, let me know down below. Tell me down below and I will definitely do that for you. And because this book is just so near and dear to my heart, for some reason, I just connect with it. I know that the author has her own issues, but I love this book so much. Welcome to my second copy. Unless you include the graphic novel, then it's my third copy of Fangirl. So my original copy is the paperback version of this. This is a hardback version. If I can find that beautiful, if anyone's getting rid of that beautiful, beautiful special edition, like pink fangirl hardback that has like the illustrations, I would love that. I also have the graphic novel. I just, I just love that book. I don't know why. Cather and I are just, we're just fellow spirits. I feel like, I don't know. There's something like we should be sister. I just felt, I see myself in her. I picked up a beat up old copy of The Child Thief by Brom because again, a book lady, the book lady reads um, also loves this book and she's like, Alyssa, you're gonna love it. So read it. It's like a dark Peter Pan retelling. And what I didn't know is that it also has these amazing illustrations inside. And now there is a new book from Brom coming out this year. I think it's in September and could be wrong there called Slewfoot. And 
tour said they kindly said they would send me a copy of it. So I'm super excited to finally go down this Brahm dark tunnel of creepy retellings. I quickly did a reel of this on Instagram, so I'm going to go through this just as quickly. Uh, I did do a library book haul recently because I was feeling sad, and so I bought books. But I only spent $12, so it's $12 of sadness. $12 to not be sad. That's what I'm trying to say. That's not bad. I could, it could actually be drugs. Anyway, so I got a copy of The Trader's Wife by Allison Pataki because, mainly because she was two years behind me in school, and... We didn't really know each other. This is not me trying to... I'm just name dropping. Anyway, she was two years behind me in school. I see her everywhere, obviously, and uh, especially in like alumni stuff. So I just kind of want to see what her books are all about. So Allison Pataki, if if I like this, um, can I pull the Hackley connection and can we have like an interview? What's this about? This is about um, Alexander... Sorry, Benedict Arnold's um, wife. I'm going to move the mic a little bit so that we can see the books better. I picked up Silence Once Begun by Jesse Ball, which I'd never heard of before, but it's a cool cover and it's a murder mystery set in Japan. I don't believe that this is translated. Is this signed? I wonder if this is signed or if the guy just, this is just how they, he does his books. Like, Do you see that? It's like crossed off. I don't know, maybe that's how he does his book plates. But here's the best job I've ever heard. It says that Jesse Ball gives classes on lucid dreaming and lying at the art the school of of the art institute of Chicago. I'm in like a mystery kind of mood. And frankly, the cover was cool. I picked up Simon and the Homo sapien agenda because it was a dollar and I've never read it and I might I it's I should. I picked up Cinder and Scarlet for similar reasons. I do like the new editions better, but they're not a dollar. And frankly, if I don't like them, I don't care about getting rid of them. Uh, this, I believe, is actually translated. Yeah, it's translated from Albanian. This is A Girl in Exile, which is which I, is written by Ismail Kader, I guess. It sounded really interesting. It's super short. It's set during the time period of their dictatorship from 45 to 91. It just sounds like it'll be really eye-opening. I don't know anything really about Albania, and I just thought it would be interesting to read and, I don't know, just see what insight this might give me into a place in a time that I don't know a lot about, which is kind of why I've been interested in translated works. Anyway, uh, I picked up this book because it's just really, it's really pretty, and it had one of these. <laughs> And it's of bees and mists. Oh, it's also about bees. My brother's a beekeeper. So, you know, there's that. But basically, you have this girl who grows up. She's kind of miserable. You know, you've already caught me with that. And she goes to live with her husband's family. And I think some things get a little bit crazy or weird. And then she has to sort of, she starts to figure out a lot of stuff about, about her family and things. It says, of bees and mists is an engrossing fable that chronicles three generations of women under one family tree over a period of 30 years. Their galvanic superstitions and complex domestic politics and places them in a mythical town where spirits and spells and witchcrafts and demons and prophets and clairvoyants are an everyday reality. It's an astonishing debut novel that is richly atmospheric and tumultuous ride of hope and heartbreak that is altogether touching, truthful, and entirely memorable. So that just sounded really interesting. Never heard of it. Hopefully it's actually good. I picked up a hard copy of City of Thieves, which I've already read this. This is so good. I recommend this to you. Anybody who can handle books that have a ton of trigger warnings. Um, basically, this is the story of two prisoners of very different kinds of prisoners during world war ii in leningrad and to avoid execution they have like a week or something to go find a dozen eggs for this party official's daughter's wedding which in during the siege of leningrad finding a dozen eggs is incredibly difficult so you have these two very different uh people that have to come together to go on this journey to find these eggs and it takes you through the journey takes you through a lot of different areas and scenarios that were occurring in Leningrad during the siege so you get a really interesting slice of what that terrible time was like 
and the things that people did to survive. And it's, it is, there are so many, so many trigger warnings in this. But if you are somebody, I can't even list them all, but if there is somebody, if you're somebody who doesn't have issues with trigger warnings, you like Russian stuff, you like historical stuff, read this freaking book. I picked up a copy of The Road, which I used to own. I don't own it anymore. So I picked up another copy of it and I just got it because again, Naomi, Book Lady Reads, loves it. Absolutely loves it. So I thought I would get it again and read it and see if I like it. And I got a Joyce Carol Oates because they only had one Joyce Carol Oates and I've never read any and it's American Appetites. I don't know anything about it, but I'm like, let's try a Joyce Carol Oates. I picked up The Signature of All Things from Elizabeth Gilbert, mainly because it's beautiful. <laughs> but it's again, it's one of those family chronicles that, that goes over a number of years. Oh, it looks like we go from London to Peru, Peru to Philadelphia, to Haiti, Amsterdam, and beyond. There's so many. It, it just sounds like it'll be a really interesting ride. It's So I'm going to try it. I kind of have a hit or miss with Elizabeth Gilbert. I don't mind her writing, but I also find she can be a little boring for me. But we'll see. And then they actually threw this in because it's so old and beat up. But they, because I'm becoming obsessed with Virginia Woolf, they threw in this book. It was the only Virginia Woolf they had that I didn't already own. It's moments of being Virginia Woolf unpublished autobiographical writings. So I thought this would be really cool to get more perspective on her actual fictional work. I know she did a lot of lecturing and um, wrote a lot of essays about feminism and women's rights and all kinds of things. So I'm really curious to see some of this stuff. I have one book tour, I think, in this pile. I actually have two copies of it. It's Turtle in Paradise, a graphic novel, which is really cute. And 11-year-old Turtle is smart and tough and has seen enough of the world not to expect a Hollywood ending. So when Turtle's mother gets a job housekeeping for a lady who doesn't like kids, Turtle heads off to Florida to live with relatives. Florida's like nothing Turtle's ever seen. It's full of ragtag boy cousins, family secrets to unravel, and even a little fun before she knows what's happening. Turtle finds herself coming out of her shell, and as she does, her world opens up in the most unexpected ways. Like, excuse me, so cute. Must read. This is from Forever. It's Sex Life, 44 chapters about four men. I, I, I need to read this. We, I recently got uh, us passes to the local lake, so I'm hoping that we can start going there. They've had it closed for a couple days because they've been doing some cleanup, but I'm like, this is a lake book. We are going to be, we are going to be reading this at the lake. We being me, and then maybe I'll tell you about it if I ever do my May book wrap up. I'm gonna have to do them all together. There's gonna be like 97 books anyway. I picked up a copy of Halsey Street, which was. Something that Ink and Paper blog discussed and sounded really interesting. And I feel like I pick up a lot of his books and end up liking them. So it says, a modern day story of family loss and renewal. Halsey Street captures the deeply human need to belong not only to a place, but to one another. Like, that just sounds really good. I love the cover. I picked up West End Earl by Bethany Bennett for some more romance reads. Again, lake reads, need them. Yes, please. I received it in a book box that I didn't know I was still getting, but now I don't get it anymore, so I haven't shown it to you guys. But uh, Tokyo Ever After, which sounds really cute. I guess it's about it's about a Japanese American girl traveling to Japan. She kind of finds herself between two worlds, and she kind of figures out. I guess it's kind of figuring out herself. I have, as you know, I don't read a lot of summaries. I read enough to understand if I want to read it or not. So like that one actually sounds good. It sounds like it'll be an interesting exploration about identity, which I do enjoy that as a topic. And I received from Scribner a copy of uh, Anthony Doors. He's the guy who wrote All the Light We Cannot See, his next novel, which is Cloud Cuckoo Land, which the cover, if they keep this cover, is stunning. I absolutely love it. And it is a chunky monkey. This one's set in 1453 during the siege of Constantinople. And it just sounds like a really interesting time to write about. And it said that this is a soaring, soaring story about children on the cusp of adulthood in a world of peril who find resistance and hope and a book so i have to start this but this comes out this says it comes out september 28th so hopefully that's the that continues to be the um publication date sometimes those do move grand central also sent me um this two old men and a baby or how hendrick 
and Everett get themselves into a jam. So I guess there is this series where the, about these two old men, and there's one before this, and I need to get that one. But it just sounded really funny, this idea of these like two old men just ending up having to take care of a baby. And it's supposed to be really funny. It just... It's this uproarious new comedy of errors. Like, I just, I feel like this is going to be a feel-good read. This is also like a lake read, but a different kind of lake read. This is actually a book that Jesus found. And he he was like, I found this book. Tell me what you think. And I was like, you need to buy it right now. So this is The Lights of Prague. It's the first in a series. It is like a queer paranormal fantasy. Do I need to say anymore? Do, do, do I need to say anymore? I don't. I just need to read it. I don't remember asking for the, where where did these come from? Oh, okay. I remember now. So I want to give away for some used books. I was like, what are these books? I got a uh, Monogamy by Sue Miller, which I know that a book lady reads has, and it just sounds like it's like a domestic y novel. Her husband dies. I don't know. She finds out he's something bad about him after he dies. I don't know. Sounds interesting. This I, I this is the reason I entered the giveaway. It was because Magic City by Jewel Park of Rhodes is in here. And this is a story about the Tulsa race riots. And it's supposed to be very, 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 very good. And I and I would really like to read this. And then there's another one which is escaping me right now. But I have two books about the Tulsa race riots that I really would like to read uh, side by side. Oh, God. What is that book called? Angel of Greenwood. That's what it's called. So I kind of want to read Magic City and Angel of Greenwood at the same time. One is YA, one is adult, and I just think it would be... Actually, I shouldn't call it race riots. It's the race massacre. Riot is the wrong term, I feel like, because it was a massacre. So I'm going to go back and retract that. It's the Tulsa race massacre. Let's name this appropriately, because it's it's a horrifying thing that happened in our history that we don't get taught. Like, I didn't know anything about it until I watched Lovecraft Country. So I went 37 years of my life before I knew anything about it. That is sad. And that's why we need critical race theory. End of my rant. I also got two, I believe these are both thrillers. Yeah. So there's The Dancing Girls, which, okay. And then The Little, The Falling Woman, whatever, don't care. I I really just wanted Magic City. And then the last, the last two things. There's only two more things, guys. This is not awful. I've I've done way, way worse. There may be more books somewhere, but we're going to ignore that. I I got my books of the month for June. What month is this? June. My June book of the months were, of course, Malibu Rising because I have to. And then what comes after this, I was really excited to read because I feel like, again, I think Ink and Paper Blog has talked about this. I know that Book Lady Reads was getting this. This is from their backlist from April. But it just, I'm really excited. This is a, mis- a mystery at its core. It's an unforgettable story of loss and anger, but also of kindness and hope, courageous uh, courage and forgiveness. It is a deeply moving account of strangers and friends helping one another forward after the tragedy, after tragedy as they learn how their losses can unite them all. So basically like two boys die. And then it follows like how, I guess that affects the whole town, but it just sounded like really great. Yeah, I was just checking. No, that's all the books I got recently. Oh, I guess. Technically, this arrived yesterday. The Queen Will Betray You by Sarah Henning. I also have to, I have to read and I have The Princess Will Save You. So I will do those two together soon. I also got a copy of Witch Shadow by Susan Denard, which is the fourth book in the Witchland series. And I'm really excited to get to this series because there's a few of us I've been waiting to be able to binge it I don't think the series is complete yet but um that's a lot of them I can binge like four and and a bit books because there is a novella as well as well anyway um so that's everything I got recently I don't know where this is all going because I don't have bookshelves at the moment except for the one shelf the two shelves that are in my bedroom which is not enough I just have to get my button gear and finish the book nook but I haven't so anyway thank you guys so much for watching i really appreciate you being here remember to like and subscribe uh you can leave down below if you've made it this far bees (laughs) 
don't know. Anyway, leave bees. That sounds good. Leave me some bees. I will see you guys in my next video, whatever that may be, because it's my channel and I can do whatever I want. And hopefully that is wrapping up May and June, but how am I going to wrap up 50 books? I don't know how to do that, but we're going to figure it out. It's going to happen, I swear. I'm just going to be behind for a little bit until I figure that out. <laughs> Bear with. Anyway, bye guys. So just sit with me Talking to the night and to the morning Building cat mystery I don't think I ever want to go Come closer next to me Trying to find another way to say this But I think, I think We were